Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, I've got several things that I wanna share with you. Actually, we've got some machine maintenance that I've been putting off for at least three years, and every time I walk in the shop, it eats my soul because I know that I need to get that done. So I'll share that with you. I've also got a surface grinder job that uh, I've done in the past, and I'll probably have to do again in the future. I think it's pretty neat. I'll share that with you as, real quickly as well. I've also got some stuff that I wanna do on the Dewall milling machine. Why? Because. So the first thing that I want to do is replace a missing piece on this side. This machine is missing one of the gratings that filter the coolant before, as the coolant gets cycled uh, across the cutter, runs down into the table, down into the slots here. I'll get you a better shot in a second. And then it runs back down via a hose that I don't have at the moment, back to the foot. Well, before it runs back down, it goes through a filtered mesh. Well, it's missing on that side. So we're going to make that real quick. And then I want to make a way cover, really nice way cover for the front here. You can see I've already made a complete way guard, I guess. For the back, I want to make something similar for the front because this machine was damaged, I think, due to improper maintenance, somebody not oiling it, and just from it getting really dirty on the ways and causing scoring and stuff. And I'll show you why I think it's so important for me to make a way cover and have them installed on this machine. So see that scoring? That's a low spot. Actually, it's a really low spot. And all it would take is a chip to get thrown off of the cutter, you know, fall and get down in one of those little scoring parts. Then me come back over top of it. The way wiper, you know, just scoots over top of it. It gets in between the machine surfaces and causes all kinds of problems. Way wipers are good, but they're not 100%. I'm really a bigger, bigger fan of uh, leather way wipers. This, this has rubber ones on it. But your best bet, to avoid machine way damage, especially if your machine has been repaired like mine, is to cover the ways completely with a complete way guard. That way chips don't even get on the ways and they don't have to be swept off by the way wipers. It's on this side, but it's missing on the other side and I want to pop this little screen out. I need to clean it out as well. And then I, rep then I need to replicate that on the other side. It's nothing special, just a, a disc with a bunch of holes in it. See how stopped up that is. I'll clean that out real quick and we'll replicate this guy. So this is all I've got as far as perforated material, which is fine. I'll just run the drill bit through, uh, through some of these holes. They are too small. So I'm just going to use a scrub and lay this out. There we go. Now I'll just drill out the holes. <laughs> oh, that's gonna, gonna suck. I'm gonna drill out the holes in, uh, in that circle and then we'll cut it out, right? So every time I use this big do-all saw, I really try to be careful because all it takes is for you to hit a hard spot and a piece of, piece of material that you're cutting and you will ruin a blade. Ask me how I know because last time I used this thing, that's exactly what I did. I was cutting a piece of flame cut plate, thought I had ground away all of the flame cut edge because it gets hardened and uh, I didn't and just bzz, that was it. Entire blade, totally, totally gone. Gotta change it out. Right there. Got you right here. Oh. So I've shown this before, but I'll show you again. This machine has a built-in blade welder, a built-in uh, weld grinder, right? Super nice. This is a blade cutter, Cadillac. 
of drill, drill presses, uh, band saws. Bzz, blade welded. So there's our weld. And we'll just grind off any of the any of the slag using our little grind wheel on the actual saw. Does a good job this thing. Cora got a new bone. She loves chewing on stuff like that. Toys. Better than a screwdriver handle. There we go. Nothing fancy, but it will work. So now it's time to mess with the way guards. Now I've already made the back one here. It's just a thick piece of rubber that uh, is long enough to where I can move the knee and everything all the way down and the table all the way out. And it still drapes over the ways back here, keeps any uh, chips and stuff from directly going back on the machine surfaces and if it lands back here you know it just gets directed off into the floor instead of piling up back here behind the table on on the machine ways so the material that I'm using for the front way guard because it's a lot more flexible than the thick rubber that I used on the back is just cowhide leather basically this is from an old sofa that you know we got rid of years ago I cut the cover off of it and I've been using this stuff around the shop ever since it's great for this kind of thing so I've found that leather is pretty resistant to oil and stuff like that hot chips and things that land on it just it's pretty resilient is what I'm trying to say when it comes to way guards it works pretty well I like this stuff So here's a super annoying problem that I run into far more often than what you would think. It uh, definitely takes the wind out of your sails when you're you know, on a roll trying to get something done. And that is standard length drill bits are just not long enough, right? I'm drilling off of this ledge here, and that's a standard length drill bit. And it's just not long enough. By the time I you know, put it in the, in the drill here and just barely chuck up on the end, you know, I, I just can't do it. Not in drill straight. So there's lots of ways around this. You know, some people will just get an extended length drill bit, which is luckily I had one. Or you can make a custom one like this. Just a piece of drill rod drilled out, put the drill bit in, silver soldered it, boom, you got yourself a custom extended length drill bit. But one way or another, it's an annoying problem. And I'm hoping that I can do this with a standard length tap. I think I can. 
Can't do it with a standard length drill, that's for sure. There we go. Now I just got to trim this excess here, and that should work. Uh, I'm interested to see how it acts when I fold it forward. Yeah, that's all right. All right. So there, it's rolled in. Right, not bad. You can still fold it back. Put some oil on the, the gibbs. It's all trimmed up. Doesn't look bad. Right? That's not bad at all. I like that. All right. Protected. So the sun is just now, just now, peeping up over the hillside. Love getting up early, watching the sunrise. You get to see things that you normally, animals and stuff around here anyway, that you normally wouldn't see during the day. So, can't see too much due to the reflection, but you get the idea. Nice out there. Just now, waking up the world. At least my world. So something that I haven't done to this machine, well, really, there's been no reason to do it up until this point, is uh, level it. I haven't leveled it. And it's not sitting on any feet, either. It's just sitting on some square chunks of steel. So I want to change that, level this machine up. I've got some pads here, some machine pads. We've got some uh, three-quarter ten, I believe what it is what it is, threaded rod, some grade eight stuff, and we've got a machine level right here. So let's calibrate this level, because I haven't in a long time, just show you how it's done, and uh, you know, get to making some feet. It shouldn't take long. Get this machine leveled up. So I picked up this level off of uh, the eBay, I think it was. Come with the little spanner to adjust the level. Come with instructions on uh, how to adjust it. And overall, pretty nice little unit. Got some insulating grips to keep your hands from heating up the level. Cast iron base, pretty nicely ground. I've had this thing for quite some time. Uh, seems to overall be a decent quality level. Come with some anti-corrosive paper, and let's see, is there anything else in here? Huh, look at that. Overall, I'd have to say that I am happy with this purchase, and uh, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate to, to buy another one if I, if I needed it or knew somebody who did. All right, so to calibrate our machinist level, all we need is a flat surface. It doesn't have to be a surface plate, right? It doesn't even have to be a level. Let me show you how to dial one of these in. It, it is super simple, surprisingly simple, to you know, calibrate one of these precision instruments. So I'm gonna go over this super quick. I'm not gonna go into you know, major detail, but all we need is a flat surface. We can rotate. It doesn't have to be level. This surface plate's not level. It's on casters, I roll it around. But this level's relatively close to accurate. I know that. So I can rotate this somewhere in 360 degrees of rotation. This bubble should, at some point, rest right in between the marks, and that's, that's what I'm after. Let's rotate this until our bubble falls in the center. Oop. So we've got a level plane through this axis of the plate. This is a half the hour over 10 inch accuracy, at least the hash marks. Each one is a half the hour over 10 inches. So don't want to handle this level too much because just the heat from our hands can affect, it will affect the way that this thing reads. So 
they can drive you insane, especially the ones that are more accurate than this one, um, you know, trying to get them perfectly calibrated. So we just want to find that level plane on whatever surface that we're working on. Okay, I'm going to call, uh, for demonstration purposes, let's call that. Okay, and now that this bubble is setting in between the marks, I'm going to build a fence so I can come right back to this location. I want my level to be able to move the level and then come right back and it still be uh, on that uh, level plane we've got on this plate right now. So I'm going to take some heavy items and just scoot up next to this. Make sure that nothing moves. Okay, so I'm just building a fence, that's all I'm doing. Now I'll check, is it still in the same spot? Yes it is. So now I'm going to take this level out of its position and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and I'm going to come right back in very carefully and put it in the same spot. So if this level is calibrated, it should read exactly the same as it did 180 degrees out. And it is super close. So this is telling me that this level at this moment is accurate within a half thou over 10 inches. It's, a, it's, a ha it's one of the one mark off. So it's a half thou over 10 inches. Now I can come in and I can adjust this level. This one uses a spanner. Yours may use, you know, a little, uh, uh, knurled knobs, who knows, right? No, they're all different. But if I wanted to get this closer, all I would do was split the difference. I would come in and adjust half of the distance that it's off, and I would flip back and forth, back and forth, making very small adjustments, handling everything as little as possible until it read the same, no matter if it was in this way or in this way. And that's all, right? You don't have to have a bunch of precision equipment to to set one of these up. Just a flat surface and the tools you need to adjust your level. So what we're doing here is pretty straightforward, really. I've got a couple pieces of three-quarter ten threaded rod, some nuts that go along with that, the feet that will carry the load of the machine. We need four quarter inch thick, I'm thinking. Uh, this is inch and a half, 1144 stock. So we need four washers. So we'll go over the lathe, drill this out, part them off, run over to the surface grinder, maybe plop them on there just to get the washers nice and parallel. And then that's it, right? We'll weld on the nuts on the top piece of our threaded rod and then uh, assemble all this.
All right, there's our four washers, quarter inch thick. I'm just gonna, you know, run a file over them or a stone, put them on the grinder. Not that it matters, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And there we go. Nice, thick washers. Stand over here. Yeah, there you go. Stand right there. So here's the plan. We've got our washer, our nut. We've got a foot, and that washer is going to go below uh, that right there. We'll have a nut, you know, welded on up here, and we'll be able to Cora. We'll be able to uh, adjust the height uh, like that. Right? That makes sense. Let's cut our pieces to length. And then we'll weld a nut on top, right? And this will be the only adjustment. It will be from below. I think that will work. All right, so I got all four feet under this thing. Haven't adjusted anything yet, but I wanted it to be just high enough to where, you know, I can get a broom up under it, and that's it. Not that this machine needs me higher off the ground than it already is, you know, but I wanted to be able to clean up under it. So there we go. Feet are installed. Now, just got to get the level on here and, uh, you know, start tweaking this thing, see if I can get it dialed in a bit. Let's see where we're at. So front to back, uh, looks like we are high in the back. So I need to raise the front up, not a whole lot, but some. So that's uh, relatively close. Let's check right to left. So we're really high over on the right hand side. So this left hand side's got to go up, I don't know, almost an eighth of an inch. So not way off, but uh, you know, we're, we are off obviously. So let's I'm just going to start front to back, I think. Three leveling feet are so much easier to work with than four, but, you know, that's just the way it is. So this has got to go up in the front. I'm just going to try to you know, do them all a little at a time. that help me any? Oh yeah, getting closer to cold a little more. All right, so we need to go down on the left hand side just a little. You can see just barely left in this level, getting close. All right, so this thing is level, as far as this level is concerned, it is anyway. Back and forth, you know, right, side to side, front to back, check and tweak and check and tweak. 15, 20 minutes later, 
right? We're on the money, right? Not too bad, actually. It didn't take near as long as what I thought it would. Now, I leveled this with the knee locked because really that's the way you should machine with the Gibbs that you can lock locked. Um, this is a lot of weight out on the end of this table. I'll show you just how much it moves um, with the Gibbs unlocked. You know, not a huge amount, but if it's loose enough to move up and down, you're gonna have some sag and uh, it's gonna sag more with this table out. Nothing's absolute. This machine is level with the table in this position right everything as is but as i move this table right i could take this level set it out on the end here crank the table out and you would see that it would it would change just because of the weight of the machine you know unsupported nothing's 100 percent rigid but as far as under the cutter right here we are level so let me bring you in and show you just how much this thing moves right just by unlocking the gib and everything's adjusted pretty tight all right, so hopefully that bubble shows up, but that is front to back. Show you right to left. Now, because of your the angle that you're looking at it, you know, it may look better or worse than it is, but I assure you that it is good. Now, let me show you front to back once I unlock. Let's let this settle, and once I unlock the gibbs on the on the knee back here, I want to show you how this thing will sag out towards the front. All right, so ready? I'm going to unlock the Gibbs. Wow, so that moved almost a thou. No, it moved yeah, a thou and a half. So there you go. That's just how much sag from uh, unlocking the Gibbs, and there I locked them back. So there you go. And this is as close as it's gonna be. So I've got a little job in the shop that I wanna share with you, and it is a badly damaged, really badly damaged set of chipper blades, not wood chipper blades like you normally think of, like tree tripper, tree, tree chipper blades. These are let me show them to you. I'll explain a little more. You know, once you see them, it'll make sense. So when I say chipper blades, I don't mean wood chipper, obviously. And this is from a scientific instrument, actually. Um, made to chip up biomass, hay, straw, same thing, basically. Wood chips, oats, anything soft-wise that you need broke up into a specific mesh size, or particle size, right? These four blades here are fixed. They're all identical in their height and they are non-adjustable. These six go on a rotating drum that is adjustable so you can change the distance in between these two blades affecting your end particle size. So this happened to get used for chipping up electronic circuit boards actually. That's what somebody used it for. And they really did a number on this blade set. Now, because of shortage of time, you can buy these blades, but because of shortage of time, these blades need to be back in service super quick. So that's why I'm repairing these instead of buying a new set. Now, this set is fixed. May I mention that? We are gonna grind these to the same height, same size. Now, ideally, I'd stick these in the milling machine and just, you know, zip the edge off and then touch them up in the grinder to put that super sharp edge on them problem is that the cutting edge is some sort of tool steel. These are a soft body with a brazed on, uh, you know, high speed steel or something edge that uh, is probably just going to require 100% grinding. Now one of these blades is not like the other. This one, it's bent. So we're going to have to straighten that out as best we can. We'll try that in the press. Then we will grind these blades, these four, to the same then we'll just put an edge on these because they're individually adjustable and do not need to match. So we're over here at the Dake Press, and what I'm going to do is just carefully try to coax this blade back straight, and no more than that, really. Just want to be very careful and don't want to stress out this blade any more than it already has been. And all I'm going to do is uh, press 
right down the center of these two bolt holes. Let me get you in a little closer because I think that's where the bend is mostly. So I've got a piece of steel here and I'm just going to set it right across where I think the majority of that bend is there. And then bring our ram down a bit and just see if I can't straighten this up. You know, it ain't going to be perfect probably, but we can get it close enough to where it'll work for what we need it for anyway. All right, so engage your safety squints there. This is not the, yeah, probably not the most uh, stable way to press this. Press too hard. Let's see what that did, if anything. You know, this thing would shoot out of there like crazy if I got too carried away. Yeah, we we definitely pressed on it. Let's go see. Surface plate. So I'm just removing uh, some of the raised area from the damaged damaged blade edge. And we'll set it on the plate here. That's pretty good. Pretty good. First go around. And I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that flat enough to proceed forward. We definitely put some pressure on it. Actually pressed a little bit of an indention in it. Not enough to really hurt anything. But yeah, it's definitely flatter than it was. And uh, I can move forward. So we need to measure what angle we're gonna be grinding on these. I'm going to just use a, a little cheap angle finder here. Looks like a 45 degree to me, but it's not, actually. Between 42 and 43 degree. See if they're all the same. Yeah, that one's dead on 42. Okay. Are these the same? These are all the fixed plates. They should, these should all be the same. Whatever one is, the rest should be. But these are so worn. So worn. It's going to be hard to tell. There's one that's not so bad. Let's see what it says. Yeah, it's the same. Let's just say 42 degrees. Why 42? I don't know. That's just what these say they are. So that's what we'll set them back up as. Let's get our gauge blocks out and uh, dial in 42 degrees and then we can go over to the grinder and start, you know, blasting some metal off these. All right, so now that all of my, get, all of my blades have been deburred, it's time to get set up with our fixture. This is a signed grinding vise. Awesome, by the way, if you have a surface grinder, you need one of these. This one happens to be four inches between the rolls. It is a three inch jaw width, and I think it opens up to five inches. I'm not exactly for sure. Nice little sign vise. Nothing super expensive, but uh, plenty accurate for 99.999% of the stuff that we do. Now to set up my angle, I do it the super lazy way, and I use the how to use the sign plate by Suburban Tool App. I dial in four inches between the centers. It asks me, What's the center distance between my two rolls? Four inches. It asks me what angle that I want. I want 42 degrees because that's what all of these are. Why not 45? I don't know, but the 42, we're not gonna change that. Push calculate and it tells me the gauge block stack, which is 2.676 inches that needs to go below or between the base here and this back roll in order to give me 42 degrees. So we need a set or a stack, 2.676. So two, now there's gonna be a lot of ways we can come up with this. 2.6, let's see, six, so we'll go four. 2.4, seven, six. So we can get a 36 and a 30. A 36. 
No, a 46. Do we have a 46? We do. A 46 and a 130. Is that right? I'll have to do the... Yeah, so... If we stack together our 146 and our 130, that gives us 276 plus our... 400, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6, 4, 5, 6, yep, that's it, 2.7, 2.676, that is our stack right there, so we'll wipe these off, we will uh, ring them together, and then we'll set them up under our uh, rolls on our vise there, you cannot go wrong with a nice set of gauge blocks, even a cheap set, going to be the most accurate thing in the majority of our shops, you know, times two, even the even the budget budget blocks. Nothing wrong with them at all. So let's get set up and go over to the grinder. All ringed together. Now all we have to do is raise up our sign vise here. Set this underneath that roll back roll. Down with a little bit of pressure, lock it down, boom, we are set up at 42 degrees. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grind the matching four set. So we'll stick a little parallel in there. We will stick our blade in there. We'll crank that down, go over, get dialed in on the grinder, and then uh, put our edge on there, right? And then repeat many times. Go outside. Come on, Cora. Come on.
All right, so there's one. Turned out really nice. And hopefully, we'll just clean all the rest of them up and they'll still be you know, within spec. All right, so all four of these fixed blades, they've been dressed down really nice. Now, I took what I thought was the worst one, ground it to it cleaned up. It ended up being about 60 thousandths. I set that as a zero, and I ground each one of these down to the same zero. So they technically are you know, the same height. Now, because of wheel wear throughout this set, because I had to hog away quite a bit of material from these, you know, there are going to be some discrepancies right now. Not much, but there will be some. Now, to erase some of that, what I've done is redress my wheel, and I'm going to run these through one more time, just dusting them, and that way, you know, we get the most accurate set of blades that we can get within reason, right? They're, I'm sure, close enough as they need to be right now, but we will go that extra step just to make sure that they are very good. So now that I got all the fixed blades ground, I'm moving on to the adjustable ones, and check out the wear on the edge of this, uh, this adjustable blade here. You can see the softer metal is far more worn away than the hardened edge. And because grinding these looks the same from one to all the rest, you know, I'll spare you that. The setup's really the key on this. There you go. That's this job wrapping up. So there's all the blades four matched. And then the others are just ground to, to a nice sharp edge. And I'm going to go out on a limb, not very far, and say that this is probably this last, this blade's last sharpening. This set of blades last sharpening. There's just not a lot left, really. We did the best we could do. And I think that they're going to be all right. I mean, maybe we'll get another grinding out of a couple of these. But for the most part, you know, they've been... They've been hammered. So there we go. I'm just going to clean up these burrs on the edge, clean those up, and then that's it. Bag them up. They're ready to be put back on the machine. So I've got a little bit of maintenance that I need to do. I figured I'd share that with you guys. This is my Har Harbor Freight 4x6 little horizontal vertical bandsaw. And I've heard horror stories about these things, but personally, I've had nothing but excellent luck with this. I've used it for years. I've done almost nothing to it as far as um, add-ons and maintenance. I did put a coolant system on it. I put a cutting table on it and I changed my gearbox cover from the thin sheet metal one that it originally had to an aluminum, quarter inch thick aluminum one with a side glass and a drain plug. That way I could see if I had oil in it and keep the oil drained. Other than that, I've really, it's got the original belt on this thing. I've done nothing to it. And uh, I need to show it a little love. It's super dirty. I want to change the oil and stuff in it and, uh, you know, just get it cleaned back up. Been wanting to do this for a while. Just never got around to it. So I hate to actually admit this, but the last time that I changed oil in this machine, uh, I didn't have a YouTube channel. So it's been five years probably since this thing's had an oil change. And it gets used probably, I don't know, Several times a week, that's for sure. Not every day, but close to it. So it's due, way overdue. But, you know, I've always made sure that it was full, but you know, it doesn't leak or anything. So it's time to give this thing a fresh, fresh oil change. So I don't know if I said it or not, but this is the original drive belt and everything on this saw. I've done nothing to it other than put this stand on it, which makes it nice when you're cutting, or put this uh, table on it. That way it's pretty nice when you're cutting uh, with this horizontal or vertical. I uh, did that, like I mentioned, the cover and the coolant system. Coolant system was an awesome mod. Really helps to make those, those blades last. Not that they had trouble lasting you know, but with no coolant system, but definitely helps. So I just changed the, hello Cora, oh watch out, oh girl watch out. So I just changed the coolant uh, in this thing, it was, it was way overdue. Coolant system still working 
working really good actually. I've had zero problems with it. Um, what else? Let's show you the, uh, the oil side here. And this is how I know that it's still got oil in it. All right, so watch that sight. I'm gonna turn it on. You can see it bubbling up in there. So I know it's getting circulated around on the gears and stuff. It's not empty, but it's due for a change. And the original oil that was in this, I mean, it reminded me of something that they scooped off the ground at some factory. So it wasn't very, wasn't very uh, clean looking. It was super dark and super thick. I drained that out immediately and then, uh, you know, made this cover and put some fresh gear oil in it. And that's what we've had for all this time. All right. Is this going to come off here without a fight? Uh, probably not. Let me grab a screwdriver. So I couldn't find anything good to catch that oil in, so I just leaned this back, and hopefully that'll be enough to keep it from draining out. Let's see. Is it? Yeah. Oh, and I wonder, it doesn't leak. I use silicone on it. Okay. Wow, man, that looks, it looks like brand new. So look how nice that looks. This thing's had the daylights used out of it, and I can't believe that there's not more brass particles floating around and stuff in this oil. That is, that is awesome. Really, this thing probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have mattered if I'd changed the oil or not, but we're going to, seeing as we're in here. But that looks, that looks great. So this literally looks as clean as when I first changed it. There is not a speck of brass or bronze in there. Now that is held up really good. So I guess all I'm going to do is fill it back up and put the cover back on. I, mean, <laughs> I do feel better, but really it probably would have been fine to run for another five years. So it's time to fill this dude back up, I guess. You know, no, nothing in there that really needs any attention. And because somebody will ask, this is a 8090, just a standard gear oil. Same thing that was in this before. And obviously it's worked really well. There's nowhere in there to speak of. And I'm just gonna fill this up until it wants to run off that edge and call it good. There we go, gearbox full. So instead of silicone, just use some of the non-hardening gasket maker stuff, whatever you want to call it. This stuff pretty good in my opinion. Hopefully it doesn't leak. There we go. So now let's turn it back on, see if it bubbles up in the sight. And that's one thing that I've always watched. Every time I turn this thing on, I just look to make sure that I get oil welling up in this little clear sight glass. And that just assures me that it's getting thrown around in there. And there we go. I guess service is done. So one bad thing about this saw when I first got it that I I'll readily admit to is that the hardware, the nuts and bolts that came with it, especially for the stand, were pretty much garbage. Missing half the threads on some of them. It, I mean, it really, it, it wasn't all that stable. But what I did is just wherever it needed it, I put new hardware and stuff in it. And I've heard people say the stands and stuff on these are garbage. Uh, I just, I don't agree with that. If they're put together with good hardware, I mean, pretty stable, pretty stable. Watch out there, Cora. 
Let me show ya. Ugh. I mean, what else do you need for a saw this size? You know, it hold for me uh, with no problem at all, just because the bolts are tight in it. So, you know, I don't necessarily love it, but uh, I like the stand better than having no stand. I'll say that. Well, I guess that's it for this week. We. Hello, little girl. What are you doing? Got this machine loved. Got, uh, I was hoping to get the coolant system all sorted out and show you it working, but I'm just I'm out, of, out of the time for this week. Got my machine maintenance done that I've been worrying about for, I don't know, well over a year for no reason uh, on, uh, <laughs> on the little uh, horizontal saw. Got my grinding job done. Got this machine leveled, along with several other things that I, that I managed to do. So that's it for this week. Just a little machine maintenance, really. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever. Uh, if you help me out, you help Corey out, you help my family out. Much appreciated. Believe me. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. Let's go in the house. How about that? Come on. Let's go.